You can't understand how excited I am today to tell you at 322 today, we arrested the man that murdered my deputy. Tonight, the search for the suspect accused of shooting two Blount County deputies is over. Good evening and thank you for watching 10 News at 11. I'm Katie Inman. Kenneth Wayne DeHart Jr. spent five days on the run. This is a new photo of him after he was booked into the Loudoun County Jail tonight. He is still locked up and is due in court for the first time on Thursday morning at 9. We have team coverage tonight. 10 News reporter Maria Guzman joins us later in studio to share how one special flag is on the life of Deputy Greg McCowan. We'll hear from Aaron Velasquez in just a few minutes. He spoke to neighbors close to where police caught up with that suspect. But first, we turn to 10 News anchor John Becker, who shares the new details the Blount County Sheriff's Office shared with us today during a press conference. John. Katie, good evening. You can see over my shoulder the cruiser of that fallen deputy absolutely blanketed in tributes, including cards and flowers. As you mentioned, a manhunt like we have not seen in East Tennessee in recent memory tracked down this suspect. Here's what we learned tonight. Kenneth DeHart Jr. spent his time on the run on the move. We know he may have gone to Georgia, according to authorities. He used at least one car, perhaps others may have had more help. Already two people have been charged with helping him while he's on the run, his girlfriend and his brother, and we may see more people charged in this case. Despite hundreds of tips from the public, authorities credit technology with leading them to this suspect. He's local. He is known to authorities for prior drug as well as confrontations with police. Now, I want to show you the scene. Authorities say they tracked him to a house in East Knoxville today, and they say they were fortunate. He happened to walk into the backyard. They spotted him, and that's when they moved in to make the arrest. He gave up without much of a fight. It's roughly 20 miles from the original shooting scene last Thursday in Blunt County. The sheriff here was emotional, describing how his officers used the handcuffs of his fallen deputy to place that suspect into custody. To go over fenced and cuffed him with my deputy's handcuff, and Greg would be, I think, appreciative of that. So just so we understand, Sheriff, you did use Deputy McCowan's handcuffs. Yes, sir, we did. We have seen other agencies make the same symbolic move using the cuffs of a fallen officer to arrest a suspect. Most recently in 2022 in Loudoun County with the arrest of a suspect charged with killing Officer Chris Jenkins. Now, it will be up to the District Attorney General in this case if he moves forward with the death penalty. He will do so only after consulting with the family, and he told us tonight we will see that happen in the coming weeks. For more on the arrest scene, I turn to my colleague Aaron Velasquez, who was there this afternoon shortly after authorities arrived at that East Knoxville home. That's right, John. Authorities converge on this home in the 2600 block of Linden Avenue. They quickly made the arrest of Kenneth, uh, Kenneth e. Hart Jr. Um, they created a perimeter. They boarded, they put crime scene tape on the corner of the street, Linden Avenue in Harrison, I believe, where the house was located. So, uh, we saw the remnants of this operation uh, while we were there. Uh, my photographer and I, we saw glass on the on the ground, broken glass. We saw the broken windows where things were made entry of into the home. As you mentioned, Kenneth e. Hart Jr. was taken and apprehended in the back of the home where authorities, he said, we, uh, according to authorities, he gave up peacefully and he walked towards them. But we spoke with neighbors who say that they were happy to see a, a peaceful ending to this and that they were happy to see and also disheartened to see this happen in their neighborhood. Well, I heard this big bang and stuff and I didn't know what was going on. I was in the kitchen trying to cook or prepare a meal and I thought maybe somebody had had a wreck. So I came to the door and peeped out and seen all the policemen cars up there and the flashing lights and stuff. So I stepped back in because I didn't know if it's going to be in the shooting or not, because, you know, bullets don't have any eyes. That neighbor, Mary Ellis, she's lived in that neighborhood for 35 years, and she was happy to see this come to a peaceful solution and the suspect be taken without anybody else being hurt. I want to mention Sh Sheriff James Barong. He also said that he would have, lo he would have loved to see that uh, Kenneth Wayne DeHart Jr. be arrested by the funeral of Deputy McGowan. That is a, a goal that he set and was able to achieve.
Back to you, John. Aaron, I appreciate it there very much, uh, giving us a lay of the land from that scene earlier today. And as Aaron mentioned, we will see that fallen deputy laid to rest tomorrow. Today was about the capture of the suspect. And as Aaron mentioned, the sheriff getting his wish. The deputy will receive all of the attention tomorrow. Deputy McCowan will be laid to rest after a funeral that starts at 1 o'clock at Severe Heights Baptist Church. It will be full police honors following that funeral. We'll see the deputy escorted along a route that we're going to show you on your screen from Severe Heights to Grandview Cemetery, about a dozen or so miles. Mourners are welcome to pay tribute and respects along that route safely and off the road. A reminder, tomorrow Blunt County and Maribel City Schools are closing early to honor this deputy, and we are also seeing all Blunt County government offices stay closed through tomorrow to honor and respect the funeral service and this deputy. That's by order of the mayor.